because I think it's a super difficult problem to fix and Warzone's probably been hemorrhaging players for a while now. It's probably really difficult for them to get new players in as well because of the way the game's designed with the loadout system, how meta everything is. New players just don't stand a chance and they're not going to have fun here. So maybe the only way to get a resurgence in that again is if Modern Warfare 2 releases next year, November, they wipe the slate clean with Warzone. Infinity Ward have built a brand new Warzone experience. They kill off everything for the last three years. So Modern Warfare, Cold War, Vanguard all goes away and they bring out their Warzone 2.0, let's say. Some new innovations, completely new weapons. They wipe the slate clean, people start again. They get that influx of new players. Could be a potential option for the future there. Call of Duty Warzone 2. This is as close as we'll get to an official announcement about this without it actually being an official announcement. This has come from Bloomberg.com and it's an article by Jason Schreier who's a journalist and he's broken a lot of big stories in the past and we're going to take a look at this now because there's some very interesting detail in this and the consequences of this are huge. So this has come off the back of the Microsoft Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard and I know that a lot of PlayStation fans and PlayStation console owners were a bit concerned if they were Call of Duty fans that they wouldn't be able to play future COD titles on PlayStation and I think this messaging has been spurred on by that whether it was a developer wanting to let the fans know what's going on in a way or it could just be that Activision wanted to get this out in the wild and a good way of doing that is through Bloomberg and Jason Schreier. So here's the detail then. Activision Blizzard, which is being bought by Microsoft Corp, will release at least the next three games in its hit Call of Duty franchise on Sony Group's PlayStation, as well as its new owner's Xbox. Before news of the $69 billion acquisition broke last week, Activision had already committed to make the next few Call of Duty games available on Sony's console, according to four people with knowledge of the deal, speaking anonymously because they were not authorised to speak to press. And that's what I was talking about when I said that there are those with knowledge of this deal that want players to know what's going to happen in the future. It goes on, that includes this year's Call of Duty, expected to be a new entry in the popular Modern Warfare subseries being developed by by Infinity Ward and the following game which is in development at Treyarch, both Activision owned studios. The deal also includes a planned new iteration of Call of Duty Warzone, the lucrative free to play game that was released in 2020. So I think what's happened here is that Activision and Sony already had agreements in place about the future of Call of Duty and there's a little bit more about that now. Phil Spencer, he's the Xbox boss, who was recently appointed Chief Executive Officer of Microsoft Gaming, said last week that he had spoken to Sony leadership about the franchise. I confirmed our intent to honour all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship. But gamers have been wondering what those existing agreements were. For at least the next two years, Microsoft is committed to releasing Call of Duty on PlayStation. Neither Sony nor Activision responded to requests for comment. Microsoft declined to comment. Plans are hazier for the Call of Duty games further out, said the people familiar with the matter. Microsoft said it expects the acquisition to close sometime in the next 6-18 to 18 months, after which it will be able to decide whether to continue releasing future Call of Duty games on PlayStation. Top employees at Activision have also discussed spacing out Call of Duty releases rather than putting them out every year. Eventually, Microsoft could deprive its biggest gaming rival of an integral franchise. With some previous acquisitions, Microsoft has honoured existing contracts and then pivoted. And that's the end of the article. So ton of stuff in there. And I think Microsoft and Xbox have left the door open there, haven't they? Saying we're going to honor the existing agreement. So Modern Warfare 2 this year, next year, you would assume it's a Treyarch Black Ops game and also Warzone 2 next year as well. We did discuss this in that Battlefield 2042 video I posted about a week ago when the news of this big deal broke. And I said with Xbox spending all this money, is it that crazy to think that they'd want to make COD an exclusive? There are pluses and minuses to this, like we talked about. Xbox would lose out on a ton of profit if they removed COD from PlayStation, but at the same time, in the long term, if they can make Xbox the home of Call of Duty, ultimately that's going to get more people using their products, it's going to sell more consoles. So I really think it's 50-50 right now. But in terms of those release dates, so this year the rumours are Modern Warfare 2. I think there's that much speculation out there at the moment that something must have leaked along the way, and it's almost confirmed that that's what this year's game's going to be. And then next year, the Treyarch game could be... Cold War 2 with some kind of Black Ops game but that won't be until October November but 
also, as was mentioned, Warzone 2. And I think what's going to happen here is that Modern Warfare 2 will release this year, October, November, like COD usually does. And then as they did with Warzone in 2020, they'll go ahead and release Warzone 2 in March of 2023. So Modern Warfare 2 has a few months to breathe, get some live service out there, get people invested in that ecosystem. And then boom, when the player base starts to drop off a bit, a brand new version of Warzone releases in March. Now, I think that this could be next gen only. And the reason for that is that by March next year, a lot more people would have been able to buy next gen consoles, the Series S, X and PlayStation 5. Things are starting to look up in terms of manufacturing. So the player base on those platforms is going to be big. And of course, Warzone will also be on PC. I assume Warzone has had quite a big PC player base. So I think there'd be enough people that there to justify okay we're going to make this next gen only or you have an additional separate watered down version of it for the old consoles and remember that modern warfare engine that they built i went to e3 i went to gamescom that year all the behind the scenes presentations and marketing everything that they released online it was this is a next gen engine we built this for next gen so let's say it goes next gen only in pc what does that mean for the gameplay i think for console players you're probably finally going to get an fov slider and that would be incredible does it mean a bigger map does it mean a bigger player count does it mean destruction in the level? Does it mean the introduction of AI? Maybe I could see that potentially being a future there for Battle Royale games. Does it mean that 120 frames per second is now the standard default mode and there's a quality mode you can shift, which is native 4K60. It might look better, but isn't quite as smooth. But either way, I'm interested in this. Warzone 2, the first Warzone made a massive splash. I know the player base has dropped off a lot recently with Caldera and a lot of people are just playing Rebirth now. They're not into that World War II vibe. They prefer the modern setting, the modern guns. But let's say Warzone 2 starts fresh, wipes out everything, like I said in that video from October last year, and they hit the ground running. But when this Warzone 2 comes out, as a player, what would you guys want to see in it? How do you see Warzone, the battle royale genre, advancing, evolving, in the future let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think warzone 2 could look like i've got some ideas but i could be here for about 10 hours so i'm gonna leave it at that and finally the thing about there not being a annual call of duty release after the next two titles i believe that i think that's a real thing i think consumers are getting a bit burnt out with the franchise and that old school arena style cod gameplay so i do think that's a possible future where there's just a game called call of duty it all goes live service and every year additional content maybe portions of single player multiplayer co-op zombies are all added to this one product but with that said thank you for watching guys if you enjoyed it leave a like if you didn't a dislike subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one